How's the squad shaping up after that London game? Yeah, not too bad. We've got um, majority of the squad to pick from, so yeah, we've pulled up. We've pulled up okay from the game. Uh, Tyro May was the absence going into it. What's his situation? Yeah, no, he'll be fine. Elliot Minchella will be be fine as well. So we'll welcome those two back this week. Did you get to the root of Tyrone's issue? Was it just a concussion? Yeah, it was just a head knock um, that he sort of felt the effects afterwards. So then it was one of those that the doc checked him out and then it was, uh, yeah, the decision was to not play him the week after. Uh, James Batchelor made his return against London but with slightly limited minutes. Are you happy with how he came through it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was one of those where he's either bring Batch back this week or, you know, bring him back a bit earlier and then manage his minutes and loads uh, and that's what we decided to do. So, uh, you know, ideally we would have... You know, like making changes at half time, so we would have liked to to go sort of further in that second half. But he uh, started the season up a little bit, so it wasn't so much the injury; it's more, um, yeah, chance of doing a soft tissue uh, injury type injury. So we wanted to minimise that. Is that something that you still have to be keeping an eye on going into this week then as well? No, I mean, at the end of the day, play, you know, plays can can happen any any time, but no, no, we're happy with where, where Batch is at now with his loads and um and how, how much he sort of ran from the game, um, what he's done before that and what he's done this week. Cool. Uh, any other injury concerns going into this week? No, everything seems okay at the moment. Lovely. Uh, one of the things you spoke about before that London game was was Mikey Lewis and, and how he's you know, building towards becoming this off-the-field leader. And then in our post-match, he was saying how he spoke both at half-time and after full time as well, how pleased were you to see him grabbing that role and that responsibility? Yeah, I think it's a it's a major sign of um, his growth and his development as a as a person and, and as a player. Um, you know, Mike's twenty three now, so he's starting. You know, he's not a, a you know baby, so to speak, in rugby league terms. Um, he's you know he's he's starting to get that early twenties now to mid mid twenties where he, his best years are ahead of him. So um, it's always pleasing to see your halfback take control of the team. He did it last year uh, when we got beat against Wigan. He got the players in and spoke to them then. I thought he did a great job. And then on the weekend, as I said before, during and after the match. Um, so they're, they're signs of his of his growth and maturity, uh, both as a person and as a player. Do you think it's an aspect that comes naturally to him, the leadership aspect? No, I don't. No, I don't, to be honest. Um, yeah, I think Mike's had to, he's had to work hard at uh you know, growing as a person and developing his game, and you know, he's still he's not nowhere near the finished product. Um, you know, so uh, I think it's exciting to, to 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 see where he's at now, and then potentially where he'll be in a couple of years' time. But you know, he's uh, he, he wasn't one of those players that came in and, and was saying a great deal um, when I first came, came to the club. But he's earned the right to do that, and the way you earn the right to do that is by your actions and, and what he does on the field. So he's making sure that he gets that right first. Um, that's the most important part. And then, you know, when he when he wants to say something to the team and, and feels that he needs to say something, he, he's been saying it. Um, and it's just one of those that it, it'll keep developing in his game. But, yeah, it's uh, he's, 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 he's earned the right to, to do that, and, and that's, that's, that's off the back of his actions. How do you as a head coach nurture someone who's looking to develop that off the field role. Oh, look! You promote it. I want, I want, I want players. I want to see their personalities. That's the key. I want to see every single player's personality and who they are and what they're about. Uh, and when, when you, you know, when you see that, then you, you find out who the, who the real person is. And uh, and you know, there's guys that don't feel comfortable speaking in front of a group, and there's others that do. Uh, but what we want to have is a. You know, safe environment where, where players feel comfortable and they're not saying the wrong thing if they do speak up. Um, you know, rugby league's a very grey area. There's, there's, you know, there's a lot of ways to do things and and there's no right or wrong. Um, so we always want to hear people's opinions and and what they've got to say. So it's we promote that internally. One of the other stories that came out of out of the weekend was Ryan Hall yet again making records and and, and breaking things with his two hundred fiftieth try. But something. Whenever I look at the stats after a game, something that always stands out to me is how often Ryan Hall is your top meter maker just because of the way he's carrying early on in the sets and taking those scoots when you're receiving a kick. When he leaves, how are you going to replace that? Is it something that you just can't replace? Will you be changing your style of play, do you think, when he leaves? Oh, look, I mean, 
what Ryan Hall's done for many, many years, there's, there's not a great deal of wingers that do it as well as him. Um, but look, I will say we're not going to look for, too far ahead. Um, we're obviously recruiting at the moment for, for next season um, and we'll certainly look at how styles of play and how we want to play um, next year But or you know, the back end of this year. You know, but we're enjoying having Hawley here for, for the remainder of the season and um, you know, as long as he keeps those numbers up, then I'm happy. Fair enough. Uh, speaking of recruitment, there have been links this week uh, between Hawkeye and Reese Martin for 2025. What can you say on those reports? Yeah, there's no update on, on recruitment um, at this stage. So, you know, when we do, then then I'll uh, I'll be able to update. Um, as I said before, you know, recruitment's always evolving um, and we're always looking at, at ways to improve the squad. Um, and that's that's where it's at. Um, big week this week, first versus second. Do you notice the atmosphere in your camp changing the build-up to, to what is a big game like this? Uh, to be honest, no, I haven't, um, and I don't mind that. I think you, know, you can build something up and, and then, you know, like the semi-final when we play Wigan, uh, but, you know, you can have a, a build-up and then you, you get beaten in the first 20 minutes of the game. So we, we, I'm certainly happy with the, the, the temperament of the team and, um, and how composed they are. Um, at training today, it's it's one of those that you know we, we always talk about performance and we always talk about process. So you know how how we attack the week um, is important to us. That's the most important thing at the moment. And then obviously what we do on game day um, is going to be the most important thing. But we'll worry about that on on Friday. So up until um, then, it's about you know keeping things consistent, which we have. Warrington five from their last five. Have you noticed any similarities between the way they've gone on this run after their Challenge Cup final defeat and what happened to your side last year? Uh, I, I, to be honest, I haven't looked too much into that. I, I know Big Sammy wouldn't wouldn't like losing. Um, he's a competitive guy, so uh, look, they 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 know that that wasn't their best performance at Wembley. You know, they've openly said that. So naturally, when when you deliver a performance that you know you can be better in, then you certainly fix it. Um, you know, as I said, I've always said about the group that we've got here is uh, they certainly know how to respond um, from setbacks and adversity. Uh, you know, and we've done that ourselves. So, uh, you know, we've had a, a narrow loss against Catalans, but we've gone on a pretty good run ourselves. Of course, your side will know what his side are going through because you went through it a year ago. Does that give you a bit of an advantage or is that something that you can use going in? No, I just don't see any advantages there. No. Um, John Bateman, probably eligible for Warrington this coming week. What do you think he'll add to this side? How do you think he'll change Warrington? Oh, look, I don't, I don't think he'll he'll change him in the sense of their style of play and how they'll play. They've, they've got their their framework and and you know their style that they that they've played with you know throughout the year. Um, they're obviously just going to bring John in, who's a who's a competitor. Um, and obviously some energy, you know, within the place. They've obviously got Luke Yates who's done that as well. So that's what those new new guys will bring. Um, and obviously good players in their own right. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a great opportunity for us when we're really looking forward to it. Did that signing take you by surprise at all? Uh, yeah, it did when I saw it. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, I, you hadn't heard of John Bateman sort of getting, um, you know, shopped around over here when uh, – you know their CEO was over here in the past, and then and then it came out pretty quickly. So, um, yeah, as I said, it's it's a good signing for the for, for Warrington. Um, you know, as is Luke Yates, he's a he's a very good player. Uh, Sam Burgess making the headlines as well the other week, not for anything really rugby league related, but because Sky Sports were given access to him, he was mic'd up for the uh, it was the Saints game, wasn't it? That they got a bit of traction. Um, you haven't been approached anything like that yet, have you? No, I'll leave that to Big Sammy. <laughs> it looks better on TV than what do you I think, do. What do you think of that sort of content in terms of, do you think it's good for growing the game and creating yeah. that wide attraction on social media? Yeah, I think it's great. I think, I mean, from a spectator, I mean, I, I spoke to some um, some people that I know at Sky and I said it was, you know, from a spectator's point of view, it was it was quality. Um, obviously, I know Sam really well. Um, I know his style of coaching and what he's about as a person and um, I thought it was great for, for the game and, um yeah, so it was only a positive for, for viewers and, and people watching. Lovely. That's everything from me, Willie. I'll, I'll pass you over to this, but good luck Cheers. this weekend. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Hello, Willie. How are you? Hey, Aaron. I'm good, mate. You? Yeah, good. Thank you. Um, regarding this game against uh, Warrington, Willie, obviously in the table, 
there's not much between the sides. So do you feel that you're almost as neck and neck uh, in terms of the stature of the teams now and that you're going to go toe to toe with them uh, on Friday night? Yeah, that's what we, we plan to do. Uh, you know, obviously w- Warrington have started games extremely well uh, in the past and and that's where they play their best off the back of a good start. So, uh, you know, we're looking forward to going there and it's a, it's a, it's a really good opportunity for us. You know, I think this, this, this timing um, to get Warrington at this stage is, is, is a really, as I say, it's a really good opportunity for us to be able to go over there and, and, and prove, you know, where we're at and how far we've come as a club. And you must feel that you have momentum going into this contest as well. Yeah, both teams do. I mean, both teams have had a number of wins. Uh, you know, we had narrow loss against Catalans and, uh, you know, majority of sort of wins in and around that. So, you know, both teams uh, were sitting first and second at the moment. And, you know, I always say you get what you deserve. And at the moment, we deserve to be there. Um, and we just need to make sure that we continue, uh, you know, to stay there and how we'll stay there is by performing well. And just in terms of Super League as a competition, these are the sort of fixtures that I suppose you'd encourage people from the outside to want to watch and uh, get engaged in the sport. These are the type of games they should be looking at. Yeah, I mean, I've no doubt there's going to be uh, an awesome atmosphere over there on Friday night. We'll, we'll be taking a lot of uh, fans like we always do. So, you know, we need to give them something to cheer about. But Warrington's always a good place to go play. Um, they're very vocal and, you know, the, the players are the ones obviously deliver the product. And, you know, we're in the entertainment business, so that's what the players will do on, on Friday. It's going to be nice and physical. Um, but there'll be some some rugby played as well, some free-flowing rugby. They like to, uh, you know, play you through the middle, but they'll move the ball as well and, and, and we're very similar. So, uh, you know, from a spectator's point of view, or if people haven't watched the the game, um, it'd be a good, good one to tune into because it'll be uh, an exciting game. They're regarding Matty, Sultz and Willie, obviously there was a disciplinary issue there. So what was your take on that and what impact it'll have on your squad? Yeah, it's obviously uh, disappointing that we don't have stalls this week, but I, you know, I think the ruling is if you, you, you can't sort of put your leg out in the act of scoring and because the leg made contact with uh, the player's head, then then that that's that's where the issue is. So there was no intent, there's no malice, it wasn't deliberate at all. Um, you know, obviously just trying to stop a try. So, you know, we've we've accepted the game the the, the week um, and understand the reason for it. I know that when you asked about Reece really Martin early, you said there's no update on recruitment, but I just want to ask you just generally, um, in terms of managing recruitment with the overseas quota situation, how that is for you as a club to handle when you've got that to deal with. Oh, at the moment, we've, we're full with our quotas. Um, it's like any 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 player. You look at players, uh, you know, it, where they're at in their careers, where they're at their contracts and all that sort of stuff. So at the moment, we've, we're full with our quota spots. And, uh, you know, Paul Aiken and I discuss recruitment ongoing. Is it a difficult um, decision for you as a coach to think, oh, who do I need to bring in, who do I need to move on? Does it create lots of headaches, the fact that, you know, the, the number of spots is limited in the way that it is? Oh, it's part of the job. It's yeah, it's 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 the job. The job is always talking about recruitment, always talking about your squad, always talking around who's off contract, who you know, who's looking for opportunities somewhere else. Um, you know, you have players come in and knock on your door and say, "Well, I'm not getting a run. I want to go somewhere else." We've had a number of players, and I don't, don't have to mention them publicly, um, but you know, looking for new opportunities. And we had, um, you know, a player last year, um, well, Kano, you know, Kane, Kane Lynette obviously retiring. Um, he was going to play this year and um, and that was obviously a really strong decision of his to go, you know, he could have played another year for, you know, taking money and all that sort of stuff, but he just felt that was time and he had an exceptional career, Kane, and um, we, we weren't ready for that one, you know. So it's, it's um, as I say, you, you're always talking about your squad, but you just never know. That's why I say recruitment's ongoing and, and evolving all the time because whether it's player-driven or club-driven, um, there's always things happening. With the way things are looking for 2025 now, just looking ahead, do you feel the squad's in as healthy a shape as you would want it to be now? Yeah, we're certainly we're certainly putting together a really competitive squad. There's no doubt about that. So, yeah, I'll focus on this Friday. That's the most important thing. Just um, in the build-ups, this has obviously been some um, controversy on social media regarding um, posts that Joe Bear just made. So, just wondered from the club's point of view, your point of view, whether you have anything to say about that. Oh, we had a, we've had a discussion with Joe internally, um, but that's all we'll talk about. You know, we don't need to talk about what happened in that conversation, and we won't make it, sorry, we won't make any further comment off the back of that. Okay, that's great. Thanks for your time. Robert. Cheers. Hey, Willie. How James, good mate, you. Yeah, good, thank you. Um, just on Reece Martin, is, is he a player you have made? He's a good player, yeah. There's no doubt about that. He's um, He's been a good player over here for a number of years now. 
he ticks a couple of boxes obviously as well he's a strong second row and he brings that goal kicking as well doesn't he that you, that you have needed in the past and, but Mike has obviously stepped up recently yeah <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's obviously a, a bit of a sensitive one there's a suggestion he may not count Reece Mike may not count towards the quarter next year what's your understanding of that ruling that's that's coming in next year for oh, because of the five yeah, to be honest, I, I know. I thought I think you said it doesn't quite as a, count as a quota. Um, I'm not sure if that's coming in. Is that coming in definitely next year? I'm not 100 percent sure. To be honest, uh, there was a report out yesterday. So right. Since, yeah. But... Yeah. I, I mean, I've heard I've heard it before, but I wasn't sure whether that that comes in next year or comes in um, the year after. So, yeah. To be honest, man, I'm not 100 percent sure. So obviously, um, Reese will count towards quota. He's a free agent. If you if you were to bring him in, you'd obviously have to do some movement, wouldn't you, at your end? Yeah, I've got nothing to say at the moment, mate. As I said before, well, if, if there's something to add on recruitment, I'll I'll talk about it. No good stuff. I'll move on onto the game. Um, people will be talking about your your away record in the in the northwest this this week. How, how helpful would it be to put that to bed on, on Friday night? Yeah, I mean, it obviously comes up in the media, um, you know, around our away record, but. All we can control is what we've done all year. Is, is the following game, and as I said before, we've had, you know we're having a really good week in terms of keeping things consistent and, and approaching the game as we would any other game. Um, and the players will be excited Friday. You know, I have no doubt that these players will be ready for um, you know to, to play over at Warrington on Friday night. Um, by the way, that you know we're, we're we're developing as a team, we're growing as a team. Um, you know, as I say, regardless of where we where we're playing, we just need to be. We want to be consistent. That's what I've said a number of times now. So you know, what, what's the aim and, and what do we want to get out of Friday? It's it's putting in a you know a KR performance um, that we're proud of. And you know, if, if we do that, then you, 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 you're thereabouts. Uh, Ryan, I mentioned that improving that record a couple of weeks ago. Has it been spoken about internally at the start of this week? No, no, mate, things like that. I, honestly, I don't I don't give energy to it because. It's um, as I say, like if whether we played here, like we'll we'll, we'll look at our games, uh, you know, that back end of the first, second half on the weekend, you know, if we play like that, where like on Friday night at Warrington, you lose the game. If we play like, um, you know, we we started the game uh, against London, like on Friday night, it doesn't matter where we play, but it was at Warrington, then we're going to be in the game. So, yeah, there's no need for to think about um, in terms of. We haven't won away and all that sort of stuff. It's it's there, and I understand it. That's that that's fine. I understand that that media are going to talk about it, and uh, it's there. But as I say, if we play well, we'll put ourselves in a chance. If we don't play well, we're playing against a very good team. Um, and for me, it's not where we're playing is is the reason why or why not we're going to have a strong performance. Yeah, you, you probably won't forgive me for saying this as well, but we're in some of the one side uh, OKR okay, have yet to beat since since you came, and even though you have had some close games against them. Um, what are some of the challenges you found coming against coming up against them? They've got very good individual players. You know, Matt Dufty's been a key player for them um, on the number of occasions that we've played them. There's no doubt about that. So, you know, we probably haven't controlled Matt Dufty the way we would have liked. Um, George has played well as well. Uh, Vaughan's played well. I mean, they they got really good individuals. But I, I'd have to say that Matt Dufty's been a key player when we've played against them. Um, you know, and he's a quality player. So we uh, we need to make sure that we, we close him down this Friday. You had some problems on your right edge the last time you went there. Do you think that was just an off night or are you doing something to, to firm that, that edge up? Oh, again... James, like if yeah, you, you, I can't. I don't know how many games in between there's been in between that, but you know we've we've got our right edge right. You know, so if we go out this week and something happens to that right edge, it doesn't mean because we're playing Warrington away. That's that's why our right edge suffer. Um, we we come out of the system. We we started making decisions last time. Uh, or players made decisions. You know. On their own, uh, you know, we've fixed that. We've we're back to um, defending how we want to on that right edge, and um, and I know these guys will do it, do it again on on Friday night. You know, as I said, there's there's going to be times that we're going to be challenged um, on both edges. Uh, you know, Matt Dufty and George and 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 those type of players are, are quality players. Um, they'll be running the ball a number of times. They're going to challenge our line a number of times. So, you know, they're going to put us under the pump at, at stages as well. Um, but it's just how we hold up off the back of that. Um, but I'm looking forward to, you know, they play a similar sort of style to us and, you know, both teams like to get in the cycle and um, I'm looking forward to that. You're obviously in contention for the League Leader Shield with eight rounds to go. It doesn't get much acknowledgement. What's your view on it as a trophy? 
Oh, look, we 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 want to chase any trophies. It's 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 why you play the you know where the players play. It's it's obviously uh, for our club. Um, you know, we we no other Super League. Sorry, there's only been four Super League teams that have won the competition, and I'm not sure the exact stat on the, the League Leader Shield. That doesn't win you the Super League, but it certainly helps. Uh, so you know, we're in a position at the moment that that we that we potentially could win that. But again, we don't want to think too far ahead that the, the game on Friday is the most important game and then obviously the week after um, against Castle will be the most important game but that's it you know we don't want to be going too far ahead I know I know where we're at for the next couple of weeks but Warrington's uh it's going to be a really exciting challenge um more of an opportunity for us just one more on that everyone wants to win at Old Trafford but is finishing top after 27 rounds right up there in terms of the achievement itself uh to be honest mate I'll I'll see where we are off, off the back of it. Like, I'm honestly, I'm not looking too far ahead because it can just, there's so much rugby league to play. Um, Friday's the most important game for us. Like, we want to go out and win on Friday. There's no doubt about that. I'll share that with you. You know, we're going out to, to, win, to win on Friday night. Um, and that's the most important game for us at the moment. I'll tell you, can I show you again in seven weeks' time? Yeah, certainly. We'll see yeah, we'll then. Thank you very much. All the best on Friday. Thanks, Cheers. James. See you, mate.